Kalimeraki, Kalisperaki, Kalinikta. No matter where in this weird and wonderful world you might be, the Arsenal won 3 2 at the weekend, and nothing or nobody can change that. And our women won the Conti Cup, smashing Chelsea. Oh, glorious. Reminds me of the old Arsenal song. Good old Arsenal. We're proud to say your name. Let's go! Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Hello, everyone. Thanks indeed for making the Highbury Squad part of your day. It's a new week. It's a blank canvas. Let's paint pictures. Let's tell stories. So here I am. After all that advertising of my mega show in two parts, I'm here all on the Todd. <laughs> okay, Super Kev will be here in about 18 minutes. All right, 8.20, Super Kev um, will be here. Unfortunately, Shaban can't make the show tonight. She had a bit of a work emergency, um, so she has promised to come back uh, and talk about our Arsenal women and their incredible achievement at the weekend. She was at the game. So Shaban and Demian will be back for another show to cover that. So apologies, squaddies, if you tuned in right now expecting the sports broadcaster and talk sport host, uh, but she will be back with us at another time. But that doesn't stop us from saluting you guys, I always lose my manners when Super Kev isn't here. But as I said, Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell will be here in about 17 minutes time. Um, I know. So this hat nobody likes. Let's let's start talking about that. All right. Nobody likes my blue and white hat. I never wear blue. Rarely. Here I am all in blue. What is wrong with me? After a weekend, OK, that was laden. And cooking in red, I turn up the audacity on today's show, wearing blue. You could look at it as two things, Matty Kay. One, it's a reminder to Tottenham as to how absolute garbagely shite they are and rubbing it in their face. Or you guys can forgive me because it is my nephew's rugby team, the Oddballs. And I wear it to support him. And so I'm wearing this hat today for my nephew, who's a little bit of a legend and is really good at rugby. All right. So I'll work on it. Maybe what I'll do, I don't know what I can do. Maybe I won't wear it again on the show, but I'm wearing it in support of him. Okay. And also, if I didn't give you guys something to moan or bitch about, it would be boring, would it not? It would be absolutely boring. So, you know, there's your moany minute for the day. Sophie's in blue and it reminds us of the enemy. But you know what? Keep your enemies close. Your friends close, but your enemies closer. All right. That's my tip of the day. Okay. A hundred of six, 116 of you folks in live chat. Kiss that like button if you love what happened at the weekend. Thank you, Al Cup, for your forgiveness. Matty Kay, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you, Suraj, as well. It's for the nephew. No excuses, says Sumitodo. I get it. Ostiaman, what a time to be a gooner. What a time. David, good evening. All the usual suspects are here. They're in the house. Hello, Muttley TV. Uh, Reese is the word, is the word. It's got groove. It's got meaning. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, I want to read something to you guys. Firstly, thanks to Zenith Coins, our partners, for always uh, doing such great things for us. Um, we're giving another coin at the end of this week. Woo, whoop de woo. Um, by the way, if some of you are in the United States, I'll be joining Guna Palooza and the Chicago Gang and the Midwesterners. Be joining Arsenal Vision, Tom Canton from Guna Talk TV in Chicago for a panel, which is moderated uh, by Magic Mike. So go over to the Chicago Gunas uh, website, check them out on Twitter, go to the link, and you'll be able to sign up if you're based here. And if you're not based here and you want to come, for fun, for a weekend, to hang out with a bunch of Gooners, check out Goonapalooza. Okie doke. Where do we begin? Let's begin at the beginning, shall we? Oh, my God. 
It's just so much. I can't wait for Kev to get here. Literally, just have to hang on for another 14 minutes. But I want to do something with you guys before Kev comes into the chat because I wanted to um, talk to you guys about a couple of things. Also, my friend Tamar Hassan, you may know him. He's been in a lot of um, cult British gangster movies. He was in a classic movie called The Business and, of course, The Football Factory. Tamar Hassan, that's with two S's, okay? I believe it's with two S's. Let me just double check. He is doing amazing things, uh, raising money for Syria and Turkey. Um, so please go over to his Instagram account, at Tamar Hassan. And if you can give a buck, two dollars, five pounds, 5p, 20p, 1 lira, whatever it is. If you see what he's doing out there, um, it's incredible. Saving kids. Um, he's trying to find help and house there. Right now they need to house over 250,000 orphans, and he's doing a phenomenal job. Um, that's Tama Hassan on Instagram. Please please go check it. Um, we always want to support all of our different communities um, on this channel, and he's doing amazing things raising money. Right. Let's talk about football now, shall we? It is a good film. The business is very, very good. Okay. Um, let's talk about the weekend. It was amazing. And I wrote something down because I was trying to articulate how I've been feeling since the game at the weekend. And I think one of the most obvious feelings I've had is how proud I am to be an Arsenal fan. Um, but, you know, it hasn't been that way at times. You know, we've been through a lot. I did a show about a week ago called The Fall and the Rise and Fall and Rise of the Arsenal Football Club. And I feel like we're on that second part, you know, the third part, the rise. So when I was thinking about the game, I was like, how do I articulate to the squaddies? What is it I want to say before Kev comes on? to then have him take us into that player mindset, to be part of something like that as a player at the weekend. When you talk about kicking the ball up against the wall in the streets of South London or in Brazil or anywhere in the universe, as a young boy or a young girl, you're doing kick-ups, right? I was standing in front of Mia Hamm at the weekend. You know, as a woman, she probably didn't believe, like, in the in 99, she could go on and win a World Cup, win a, an Olympic gold, like take women's football to where it went. You know, Reese Nelson, when he was young and he was dreaming and he's a Haylender and he's going through the academy and they're seeing all these other players, invincibles, you know, before them. All of this stuff that goes into what happens to build a team and have a fan base that support and love that team. And that journey for the players starts way before. And as we know, that journey in our own careers you may reach a moment and someone will say, holy cow, man, that just happened overnight. Nothing ever happens overnight. Nothing. I've said this to you before in the industry that I, I was in for years and years and still dabble in the entertainment industry. Dallas Buyers Club is a film that a lot of people came out and said, oh, my God, that's amazing. It took 17, 18 years to put that film together, which then eventually went on to win an Academy Award. It takes time to build something. And I didn't have any patience for the build at the beginning. Very little patience, right? And we've talked ad nauseum about why some of us didn't have patience. Because, you know, when you stay at the Four Seasons and then you have to stay at the Roadside Motel, it doesn't go down so well. It takes time to adjust. You're never really going to embrace it. You're never really going to like it, right? And for a while, you know, we were hanging out at the roadside motel. Kevin and I have talked about the fluffy slippers and the bathrobe. And Arsenal were far removed from that. What I feel like as a fan, you know, and we say this a lot on our show, our community, our people, the way we care for each other. Since this show has started, our football club is starting to mirror us right now. And I'm not saying the Highbury squad is responsible for all of this. I'm talking about shows like ours, you know, Tom Canton, Magic Mike, meeting fans like Marky Mark, like MK, like everyone in chat, Matty K, Carol, Lynn, all of you are attached to the Arsenal in some way. 
whether you were born in North London or not, I don't care where in the world you are, if you love the Arsenal Football Club, that's all that matters to me. Okay? Now, being critical is not a crime. Being abusive is. So let's just keep this positive. And I really want people to be a bit more forgiving. There are a lot of people that wanted Wenger out, but were vitriol about it. We've forgiven those, right? There were people that wanted Xhaka out for a long while. Look what's happened. We've forgiven him. He may not have fully forgiven us, but there's been forgiveness, right? Losing 4-0 in a Europa League final is embarrassing. I mean, it's the, one of the worst ever. But you move on, right? You forgive, but you don't forget. For us as a team, we've been through so much trauma. Thank you so much. I have to have, thank you, before Tony goes, I've got to have my, my espresso, my tea here. We've been through so much trauma that we don't allow ourselves permission to enjoy the moment. And I'll, I'll get to all of your comments in a little bit. Just hear me out here. For the first time, I think, in a really long time, I'm allowing myself permission to enjoy the journey and the ride rather than look too far ahead to the destination. When I was at Old Trafford and we lost 3-1, earlier in the season. It was brutal and it was a horrible drive back to London and I hated it. But I still found a way to enjoy that day, if you can believe it or not. I was with my cousin George, his son Rocco. We're three together. We got our Marks and Spencer's goodie bag, our sandwiches. We're on our way to Old Trafford. Win, lose or draw, this is, this is it. And I think the reason why it's a different vibe of win, lose, or draw, this is it, versus when Mustafi and Kalasinac and some of those other guys were playing, is because win, lose, or draw, you feel these players are doing everything humanly possible to win a game. They are giving everything out there on the pitch. Those other guys, players, frauds, <laughs> were not. So even though we lost and I'd flown thousands of miles to be there, I still look back on that day and I loved that I was part of it. I loved that despite the fact that we went 3-1 down, our fans were still the loudest in the stadium. Despite the fact that we got totally shafted on that day, our fans did not stop singing one iota. I loved the fact that despite that we were losing, you know, nobody moved, no one went anywhere. I loved the fact that even though we knew that we were going to walk away from that game, watch match of the day and be really pissed off, I was still really happy that I was there for that moment. And I was really stoked that I was there for the moment where Gabriel made a mistake and Mitrovic scored, but Gabriel got the winner, the Saliba own goal, the winning against Manchester United at the Emirates, meeting Maria that day at the end of the last season. The journey is different now. So you accept a little bit of the screw-ups, the loss against Everton, the draw against Brentford. Because you can see all of the other things that are happening around you. And if you're still one of those people that is questioning anything, I can't help you at all anymore. I just can't. So what I took from that game is I'm allowing myself permission to enjoy it. Okay? It's been so long since the Arsenal have been in a competing situation. How long has it been? Our people, our fans have been long-suffering, which is why some of us don't want to look too far ahead. We don't want to think of disappointment because we've been so disappointed in the league over the years. But I think it's okay to allow yourself permission to enjoy the ride this season, regardless of the outcome. Man, if we took every experience in life and just thought about I don't know, thinking about it like a book, like in When Harry Met Sally, the famous line. I always read the last page of a book just in case I die. When you're living that way, you're just missing everything in between. You're missing the moments. And so I've decided to focus on the moments. 
We've been so jealous of teams, Liverpool, Manchester City, Chelsea, for years. They're always the ones at the top. They're always the ones competing. Those big games at the end of the season, who's going to win, who's going to lose, who will rise, who will fall, who will be victorious. And finally, we are there. We are actually in the conversation. We're not only in the conversation, but we are the narrative this season. Without us, there would be no title challenge to Manchester City. So the culture you see on our show and have seen on our show is the culture that we're seeing in many different places. And Arsenal fans deserve that. You're seeing it at the Emirates. You're seeing it on the US tour with the Arsenal America group. You're seeing it on social media with our positive fans from different organizations in Africa and Asia and Australasia and South America. You're seeing it in terms of how Arsenal promote our fans and we're on the, we're on the walls of the Emirates. They're including everybody in everything. This is a totally different beast. We've been wanting our club to catch up for so long. We've been wanting our club to show they care. We've been wanting a culture again, a vibe, a belonging, a hub, a community. Dare I say something to die for again. And I was at that Manchester United game and when Eddie scored and it went 3-2, it was insane. I was like, wow, I've never, ever heard or seen the Emirates like this before in my life. And what happened at the weekend totally blew that out of the water and I wasn't even there. But you could feel it. You could smell it. You could taste it. And the manner in which that we did that was just beyond special. So this season has gone to levels that we've dreamed of. And I think we've said this a few times where it's like, is our Arsenal back? Do we truly have our Arsenal back? I think there's been many moments so far this season where it's proven that we do have our Arsenal back. And I think at the weekend, it underlined that we have our Arsenal back. And whether or not we win or lose this league, to be at that United game was special. To be there when Eddie scored the winner against United was special. I will go as far back as to say, if you were there the night where Giroud scored the court scorpion kick, what a great night to be there. If you were there on the day where Jack Wilshire made that incredible finish against Norwich, one of the greatest goals ever, well done for being there. If you were there the night Thierry Henry came back and scored against Leeds in the FA Cup, what a moment to be there. And if you're not there, those experiences are transported and translated through the beauty of video and pictures and everything. And I feel like there's this collective massive hug around our club from the supporters that love the Arsenal. And to me, that is, even though those moments, the Giroud, the Wilshire, the Henri, those moments have gone, the Emirates has really needed moments again to become a place to become the stadium that we really fall in love with someone said Wenger built the Emirates but Arteta turned the lights on credit where it's due Arteta and Adu just absolutely incredible so I'm giving myself permission because despite the fact I've seen this film before, the Welbeck moment, the Leicester game, I am not thinking that far ahead that this can happen again. I'm soaking this moment up. I'm not going to worry about whether or not that happens again. So I want to know if you're allowing yourselves permission, if you are enjoying the moment and the journey. And if I remember correctly, Mikel Arteta told Lacazette that the journey was the most important thing. I, my little hat rack head just thought of that. I'll cherish all of the moments that we're given. And I'm not talking about Highbury and all that stuff. I'm talking about specifically the Emirates. And that moment, Reese Nelson, the goal, the comeback, priceless. Who better to bring in at this point than the man himself, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell?
Squaddies, at ease. I hope you're warm. I hope you're ready. At ease. Super Kev, how was your weekend? <laughs> you're absolutely blue. amazing. It was an absolutely amazing weekend. I've got to say, what a, what a, what was it? Four days from Everton. Mm -hmm. um, obviously finished that game. Great. 4-0. We've done a, Kev says on the Friday, you know, we're expecting big things from the team. Doesn't it just show us all, so? No matter what you predict in football, sometimes football can can just trip you up and go totally the opposite way, etc. But the key is, as we discussed, is it performances or is it results? It's all about the results now. All about the results. So we could say, oh, 4 nil, and we do this and we need to do it again. Do you know what? I am so pleased we took three points. Just give me the three points. That's what mattered. It would have felt like a loss had it ended at 2-2, right, Kev? It would have felt like a loss. And just before you came on, I was talking about allowing myself permission to enjoy the journey. And in January, I was asked a lot on TalkSport and Sky Sports 2 and by the squaddies, about winning the league. And I said, I, I, I cannot say categorically until we play City twice. And they're the type of team that could go on a run and not lose a game. And I made a decision after that United game as well to just say, enjoy this season. It's been so... Last season was exciting for different reasons. This season is just taking it to another level. Mm -hmm. Kev, I know play. I've been taking it like... Arteta and the team, one step at a time, one game at a time, and enjoying the moment. Do you do you think Arsenal fans don't allow themselves that permission because they're afraid of the past? Uh, you can say afraid of the past, but I think it's it's a little bit nervous, nervous because it's been a while since the club have been in this position. Don't forget, so everybody. We all want to win so bad. We all want that title to be secure. But it's been such a long time since we've been here. I can understand there's some trepidation. There's going to be nerves. There's going to be... I mean, let's be, let's be brutally honest here. Saturday's game was a heart failure game, wasn't it? It could give you a heart failure. Mm -hmm. Reese Nelson's goal right at the end could have just put the blood pressure so far up that people could just could could have just blacked out. Let's be fair, because it was such a big moment. You see, the bench got emptied, and you know, Arteta's celebrating on the side. Next minute he realizes there's a kid beside him. You know, <laughs> you know, you've got to kind of like come down from your high to try and Get your bearings again. But it's been a while since we've been here, so. And everybody's going to deal with it in different ways. We are. But the key to it is, can we trust the team? And at the moment, the team seems to be getting over the majority of the hurdles that's put in front of them. They really do, Kev. And that is the, the, the sign of a squad that believes in each other. So here I want you to take us into, I mean, I just, I, I can't, I wonder which Arsenal fan has watched the replay back the most times. I just don't know. And by the way, Super Kev, can we just take a minute to say that if this guy isn't saving those two shots, None of that is happening. That's that save in the first half in particular, Super Kev. There were two Bournemouth players there fighting over who was going to take the shot. And it gave Ramsdale just a second came to out, adjust. Smothered it. Yeah, came out, smothered it. Listen, he's made a, he made a couple of good saves against Everton as well. Mm -hmm. Let, let's be honest. He made a couple of good saves against Everton. Made a, good, made a couple of good saves against Bournemouth. 
that's what you want your keeper to do. So at the end of the day, you've got to try and keep your team in the game. I know we ended up going 2-0 down, but 2-0 could have been 3-0. Too much to do for us. 2-0, it was, it was doable. I mean, we got no help from the VAR and referees and all that kind of thing. And I'm sure everybody's seen the kickoff. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? If, if all goals are reviewable, mm -hmm. you've got to look at the kickoff. And there were players, as the kickoff happened, they were on the wrong side of the... So, Three realistically, well, realistically, it should have been chalked off. But I don't want to... I don't want to go down that route because you know what? It was another hurdle for our boys to get over. So going 2 0 down at the Emirates. It's been a long time since we've been 2 0 down and come back and won at the Emirates like that. And the celebrations were valid. I don't care about the celebration police. Lock us up. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. Do you know what, Sophie? It's been a long time coming a moment like that at the Emirates. Mm -hmm. Especially going for a title. We've had some great moments at the Emirates, but this is going for a league, Premier League title. This is when it matters. And yeah. boy, it was great to see. I mean, the noise was incredible. Super Kev, I mentioned other moments at the Emirates where we saw joyous things like Thierry coming back, yep. the Giroud Scorpion, the Norwich goal, um, you know, but the Thierry won the closest thing to just heavenly. The others not really competing. Okay, you know, we really knew we weren't a title well, racing well Beck, team. Well, Beck's goal, you, the well well, Beck's and goal that's, you know, was one of them as well, wasn't it? So that's where I left it off in that I'm allowing myself permission to enjoy the journey and I'm not going to let the Welbeck go goal, that Leicester game, ruin this, these last few games. I'm not going to fear the same thing's going to happen now. I can't. I, I just, I understand Arsenal fans going there and it becoming part of the narrative. That moment was pretty euphoric, by the way at the Emirates, that was special. I mean, I think people live in the moment now and they tend to forget, but trust me, that goal that day was outrageous, the atmosphere there. It's just the collectiveness of how the club feels now, mm -hmm. these players, that's made it totally different, Super Kev. And the fans. Let's, Sophie, everybody is connected. And even at 2-0 down, the fans were right behind the team. Yeah, weren't happy with the with the scoreline, but the fans were right behind the team. And it was just a matter of, you know, you get one goal back, the noise level just went crazy. Get the second goal through Ben White, and it was just a matter of, can the fans help the team over the line? That, and, and that was the difficult part, so... But did you see Odegaard and Martinelli at one point? Zinchenko too. They were they were Whip literally the begging the, the fans. Because let's be know. honest, in the first half, Kev, it was very quiet at the Emirates. It was. And all this nonsense, by the way, this conversation about the drummer, just stop. You know, people it's, come at well, people if they... Fault, it is fault now. I mean, seriously. You know, people come at people if they don't like the North London Forever song. Same token. Some people like the drum. Some people don't. Some people love North London Forever. Some people don't. Doesn't mean you don't love your club and you're not supporting the team. But that young fan base has added another dimension to the club. They have made it cool. They've made it fun. They're trying to create their own culture for a new generation. And let me tell you, if we go off and we win this Premier League title, it is going to feel like they're 89 and it's going to feel like they're invincible season. Because right now they feel like it's their club, it's their time and it's their moment. And for our generation, we've seen success, Super Kev, mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. But I love what's happening with that group. Bring on more drummers is what I say. Try and go to a game in South America or even in MLS or anywhere. 
There's around the world. Band. There's a full-on yeah. band going on. I don't understand you know, the, uh, the the nonsense. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, people can be sticking the muds if they want. Uh, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, that's your choice. But the fact of the matter is, one thing nobody can cannot go against is the atmosphere. That exactly is, Kev. that is generated at you know, people you say, is this a library? Do you remember all them days? Them days are done. Everybody talks about the Emirates being different class now. So we always wanted a team to reflect the fans. Well, we got one. And exactly. now the fans are playing their part, the team are playing their part. This is this is a beautiful marriage. And do you know what? I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, Soph. The fans are starting to understand just how much that the team need them. Yes. And and you know what? And in Iceland too, you're right. I mean, if you don't have all those, the culture, it's part of the identity. And let me tell you something. Ashburton Army has helped bring it to this point. Mm -hmm. I think they got the attention of the club. They got the attention of Mikel Arteta. And whether you like the song or not, it got the attention of the club. It got the attention of the manager. These are things we our, we our culture was dead. We were finished. We had Mustafi and Kalasinac and Ozil running the dressing room at the Arsenal. Think about what has yeah, been but happening. Sophie, let's be honest. There was a lot of people when uh, you know Ozil weren't playing. All of a sudden, were coming out. You know why ain't Ozil playing? Do you remember all that? Did didn't understand. Weren't. Didn't give the manager any time. He's got to get them out. They were back in the player and the players. Mm -hmm. Let's let's have it right. So, again, not to say that you can't have your opinion, but it just goes to show that the manager, young that he is and learning on the job as much as he was, is was proven right. He had to change the dress room and the culture. Yeah, had to totally gut it and rebuild bottom up. The foundation, um, you know, what is it they call it when you have a water, a slate? What is it, Kev? When there's a leak and it's coming from the bottom, there's nothing you could do and you've got to dig up the whole bloody house. Oh, Jesus you know what I mean? That costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of manpower. Once you have that leak, you can't keep putting a Band-Aid over it. No. You've got to gut no. it. And you got to fix it. Under the floorboards, isn't it? So you, everything's got to come up. <laughs> totally. Terrible. Uh, all right. So, Kev, uh, God, there's so much that happened that I'm kind of, you know, we're going here all over the place. I, I want to save a little bit of Reese and Ramsdale because um, I just want to switch gears a little bit because it's so easy to get caught up in the fact, of course, Reese is man of the match. To me, Ramsdale was man of the match too. We'll get stuck into that a little bit. There was this moment at the end of the game and it made me choke up. There have been so many good moments and I'm going to share two of my favourites outside of the obvious, okay? I want to get Kev's take on it. These two players were walking and the goal-scoring hero was walking towards them and the embrace was one of the most adorable things, Kev, I've ever seen in a long time. These three, okay... I, and I know Martinelli's not a Haylender, but when he walked towards them, the joy on Saka's face for Nelson, but the joy Martin... Honestly, sometimes I forget that Martinelli is not a Haylender, Super Kev. I really do. He feels like he's totally grown up. And I guess he became a man at the club. He arrived yes. when he was younger. Yeah. But Saka's face here, all of it, is all of us. I mean, for Reese Nelson, Reese Nelson, by the way, scored more Premier League goals this season than Richarlison. Hey, he'd done that before he scored at the weekend. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, Sophie, I think there's a feeling, there's a feeling with these guys. Um, one sec. There's a feeling with these guys, yeah, Sophie. Yeah, that's better. Um, that, there's a togetherness feeling. And, you know, fair play to the manager. And Martellini's not from Hayland, but he seems as though he's, he's embraced by the Hayland mm -hmm. boys, full stop. And that they just seem to get along. They just seem to be on the same page. And you know what? I think Reese Nelson, 
Obviously, he's been bypassed by Saka and Martinelli, hasn't he? Let's mm -hmm. be honest. And Eddie and Ketia, all these guys have, have, have gone by him. And at one stage, he was the most he was the most talented. He was the next one to come through. And it hasn't quite worked out as much for him. But I think we're starting to see signs of life. So we're starting to see. We saw it earlier on in the season when he, he came on, he scored two goals. And, you know, he went on loan last season and he done pretty well at Feyenoord. Been injured. But to come on and make such an impact, so it's huge for his confidence. But not only that, Sophie, we, t we look at the substitute bench and we, we look at plans B, plan C. You know, who's going to come on and make a difference? Because that's a good a plan B or plan C as you can get. Somebody to come on and make a difference. I've got to say, I didn't expect it to be Reese Nelson on Saturday. Kev, we loosely mentioned him last week on the show where we were to, we were asked the question about Sporting Lisbon and who we would rest versus the Premier League game. You were talking about at least six changes because I was surprised that there were the the gang wanted to make so many changes and. I said, I said to you, you mentioned Reese Nelson, and I said, yeah, but I'm thinking that will be like injury, bottom of the barrel type, him coming in for someone. I love how football makes fools. You said it at the top of the show. There ain't no one betting 7 0 yesterday. No chance. No one's betting that. No one saw that drubbing coming. Hmm. Sorry. If you did, you're in the wrong business. You should be buying the lottery numbers every week. Um, now, what I want to ask you, because based on this, fans get super, super excited. Reese Nelson is a squad player. Mm -hmm. And now, you you know, you've seen all the headlines. New contract. You know, sign him up. I mean, if he wants to carry on being a squad player, then do you, do you keep Reese Nelson super Kev? I think I think you, when you're Arsenal, you can see how he goes to the end of the season. Because at the end of the day, he's got what you really want him to do. So you want him to perform. You want him to perform. You want him to help the the, the squad, whether he's playing or he's coming off the bench. He's proven now that he can be trusted to come on now. So mm -hmm. he can be trusted oh, to yeah. come on. So okay then. We're, we're going to need a Reese Nelson at some stage in in the running. We did this weekend. Well, I'm talking about, remember, that's gone. Yeah. So moving forward, we've got a dozen games to go. We're going to need, we're going to need him. We're going to need Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe got valuable minutes. He's been out such a long time. He's come on probably too uh, earlier than Mikel Arteta would have wanted. But I thought, let's get him in. Let's get the minutes in his legs. And let's go from there. And then to make that change, to freshen it up again, prove that it's a really great move by the manager. So at the end of the day, here's the philosophy. Does Reese Nelson get a contract? We can afford to wait until the summer. We're happy if he does the business and we, we're successful. We're happy to give him a contract. No problem. Because if it doesn't happen within a year after that, so you could always sell him. Or if he's not if he's not happy, you can always shake his hand and he can go and you'll get a decent amount of money. But his contract's up. So you can make him test the free market if you want. You know, you can allow him to do that. What is he, 23 years old now? You could let him check check other teams out, see what's on the table. Kev, um, do you think by the way, I know fluid. The, the fact that he scored it with his left, he wanted so badly to put it on his right and he couldn't because the defender was coming at no, him. He no, said, it was a bad touch. Is it? Well, you, he didn't say it was a bad touch, though, did it he? It was He's, a bad touch because well, it kind of got away from him to the left. <laughs> yeah. But that actually, you know what, So It was a bad touch to the left, right? But the way he poised, if you watch him, he kind of pauses a bit mm -hmm. and then hits it. So yeah. he steadied himself and just put his foot right through it. My God, so that was Kev, a sweet moment. Kev, he put he he hesitates enough that it slow mo. You see, it is going to hit it on the half volley. 
that's how long it felt it for the ball to just drop. Because he's he said in the post game, he goes, the defender's coming at him, so he felt he couldn't hit it with his right. But I love, mm. see, this is where Kev takes us. So he, he tries to put it on. It wasn't a great touch, but he got no. lucky a little bit with well, the touch. Well, look, or, I wouldn't say lucky. No, it was a it was a it was a poor touch, but he made the most of it. Oh my god, ridiculous! <laughs> In, incredible strike. So, and so we so needed that, didn't we? Especially after City winning earlier on, we so needed that win. And yeah, we've done that a couple of times now, haven't we, Kev? Well, we've had to go out and be and win after their result. Win late. After yes, and win late as yes. well. You know, even after they drew. You know, against Villa, we had to go and win. We done that, and this weekend they they play early, they win. And, is this? Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, Kev. Yeah, is... They'll charge us. Yeah, they'll charge us. No we don't care. Uh, Seb, don't care. can you can can we just get a real confirmation on this? Let me know if this is true, Seb. If you can confirm, that would be great. Anyone in chat? Let me tell you something. Uh, the Daily Star headline was Arsenal fans raging at celebration. Are you seriously going to charge us with something else? Like, are you not paying attention to what's happening in games? How so, teams Sophie. are crowding the referee? I don't care, Kev. Sophie. Give us the fines. Sophie, I keep saying, I keep telling you, every little thing, they're going to come after us. And you're seeing it now. You've said it all along, Kev. Said it all along. Look at all them VAR opportunities. The first one, the header where he's gone up and he's hit his arm here. Didn't even review it. Referee didn't even go and have a look. Tommy Yasu got taken down in the box. There was the one where Saka put across and the defender moved his arm towards the... I mean, come on. We've seen all of these given in other games. We've said them all given. But, Sophie, just like we always say, everyone is going to be against us. We have to stick together. We do. And get over the line in our own way. Totally. Can't focus on everyone else. If we just do our business, we're winning the league. Simple it is that, that simple. The Arsenal fans, if we do our business, we will win the the Premier League. Nothing more, nothing less. 1991 style. They docked us points. They done all. They tried everything. Couldn't and they succeeded us. then, Kev. They succeeded from. Well, they, but they couldn't stop us. Well, by the ninety-one, point. they couldn't stop us. The one docked point. Us points. Yeah. No, two points. We got docked two, two points. Yeah. Man United. I'm just got saying. Got in one, the we end, we lost the league by. You know. No, we won it in '91, but yeah. Sorry, I'm talking about the um, the 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 best team, the almost Invincibles team. Yeah. The... No, yeah. No, that was the team. That's '91. Yeah. '91. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about that team, and then also just in general. Okay, when you're looking at what they've tried to do to us this season, mm -hmm. so excited, Kev. I'm losing my years. That what they've tried to do to us this season, the celebration, the doc, you know, the 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 FA ruling, the game against Newcastle, the ludicrous, ludicrous charges, you know, I just don't understand, Kev, where that is, where that is coming from, where yeah, that but is. You're coming not going to understand it, so, but it's blatant for everybody to see, and trying to make sense of itself, so, you you do your you do your own head in. The bottom line is, you see other teams do exactly the same thing that Arsenal have done. With no repercussion. It, Kev, with in, none. With none. Yet, in ni we're in trouble. In 91, I know George built up that siege mentality. And with everything that was going on with Tony, you guys kind of came together. You galvanized. You just had a mission. You never veered away from your mission do you think this is where I think Arteta's got the Grahams in him? You know, the champagne football stuff is Arteta, but in terms of the way he manages and mm -hmm. the way he deals with the media and deals with players and insubordination and, you know, the non negotiables, it's so George Graham, mm -hmm. right? In 91, 
Did you guys listen to any of the noise outside of the dressing room? No. No. And and this is this is the which was so important because inside of the club we got a title to win. If we start listening to what's out there, all of a sudden, self, you lose focus because you're worried about what everybody else is doing. We can't be worried what's happening out there. Oh, yeah, listen, the FA the charge and all that kind of thing. Focus. Everyone has to focus. we got a title to win. We're unbeaten for a long time. Let's win this title again, boys. That was one of the biggest crimes in, I think, football, English football history. But that's a conversation for another day. Like when Kev Ian talks don't. about Ian, don't. <laughs> when Kev talks about the forces working against us, he says that because he's lived through it. Mm -hmm. That ninety-one team, I that ninety-one team should have gone invincible, Kev. Period. Again, so the the one issue we had was we were so depleted one week because we lost players on the day as well. <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're playing and then you lose players on the day, I think, what was it? David Illy was playing centre-half at one stage. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, and that's how... That's how decimated we were, so We were at the bare bones and we ended up losing to Chelsea 2 1. But I think and, the mentality. And that was the only game we lost. Yeah, and I think the mentality of that 91 team is very 89 team as well. But the 91 team in particular, having to deal with the external forces, some, of course, you know, they were um, brought on ourselves. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about that. And some not so much, but the the you know Arteta just reminds me this team the mentality that they have. Listen, you're losing two 0 at home to Bournemouth, who are bottom of the league. You're about to be super embarrassed and humiliated in your own backyard. People are talking about you winning the league, and you go and lose at home to Bournemouth. I mean, you could feel the embarrassment building in the players to the point where it galvanized them and drove them on. I tell you something, there were times where I felt like Partey and Martinelli were literally picking up every single player and putting them on their backs, Kev, and saying, let's go. And I felt Odegaard got the message, and you said something on our spaces um, at the weekend that I want the squaddies to hear as well. Because we've talked about Odegaard working in the shadows when he's not doing all this sexy stuff. That dude, I don't know if he's still running around the Emirates, but has anyone checked on him? He's grafted. Let me tell you the mentality and the graft that he put in. People talk, yeah, he's maybe not vocal like Tony Adams, but you know what? Leading by example, I thought he was absolutely outstanding. What he done, the pressing, the getting on the ball, trying everything. Him and Thomas Party, especially in that midfield, wow. 2 0, you think, okay, what we got? And they stepped up. Zinchenko joining in. It was it was unbelievable. It really was unbelievable. We just constricted Bournemouth. They couldn't get out at any stage. It was a, it was a matter of wills. So the wills, mm. the willpower of this Arsenal side broke Bournemouth in the end. I don't know if you don't know if you saw a picture of Gary O'Neill. On the, on the <laughs> it was great. He just threw his bottle down. Yeah, he, he just, did. He and just to get... be fair to him, he was he was he was quite gracious in defeat after, where he just said, you know, Arsenal are the best team in the league. Exactly. Uh, Saliba FC. We actually had a guest that was going to come on at the top of the show, top of the hour, to talk about Shaban Ahern from Talk Sports Sports Broadcast, who was at the Conti Cup final yesterday. She was going to do a special with us, but unfortunately, she had to. Um, she couldn't do it because of a work emergency. So she will be on the show. I wanted to give that credit as well. I don't want to just like do it a passing moment because what the women did at the weekend was exceptional. It's been four years since he'd won a trophy, Jonas's first trophy. Their achievement's amazing. To beat Emma Hayes in this Chelsea team in the manner in which we did, 
coming off a really bad run of form without two of our superstar players was an amazing achievement. And once again, conceding (laughs) an early goal and getting three. So I had this big bumper celebration show today uh, planned, including the women. But unfortunately, we're going to have to hold the mayo on that one just for now. Right, Super Kev, I want to change. I want to, by the way, you guys, send in questions if you want. We've got Super Kev here for a bit. Um, Super Kev, I want to share with you one of my other favorite moments, um, getting lost in the shuffle. It was maybe, I'm not saying it was more favorite than the Reese Nelson moment because that can't be. But this moment, seeing Benjamin get his first goal for the Arsenal and his joy and his happiness. And this guy, Kev, I tell you, if I'm going to pick on Arteta for one thing, stop benching this guy. Whether he's carrying a bug or he's got a knock, please tell us if that's the case. Because when you play Tommy Yasu, ahead of Benjamin White, you're going to have problems with the Arsenal nation. Kev, how amazing is this guy? Well, listen, we've seen Ben Ben White most of this, most of the season play up to up to a, a, a very, very high standard. So he has. We're top of the league. We're, you know, Players have to play well. Remember at the start of the season where people were saying, he's right back, he's not a right back, da, da, da. He's, he's been incredible there. And I think him scoring, when we needed it most, is one of the most important things he has done for this team. <laughs> I'm telling you, because he was brought on for a reason. He was brought on to, to help Saka and, and do a lot of overlapping. That's why he was brought in. And... Isn't it quite ironic? Ball gets put across from Reese Nelson, who's just come on. And Ben White comes and puts it in to, to equalise. 2-2. Two, two. Both the subs combining. Absolutely fantastic. Listen, Ben White has, has surprised a lot of people. So don't forget, often overlooked by England. Left England, the England squad early. You know, probably didn't feel he was given a fair crack of the whip. Wanted to get back to the Arsenal. And you know what? Listen, Mikel Arteta can, can, can pick Tommy Arso. He can pick whoever he wants. The key to it, Sophie, is we've got to adjust. If it's not working, we've got to adjust. And boy, <laughs> straight Ben White on your come. He adjusted and we got there in the end, yeah? We, we might not like it being 2 nil down. In fact, we hated it. But the likes of Ben White come on and made a real impact and a difference, Sophie, made a real difference. And maybe, you know, our star boy Saka didn't have the best game. Didn't have to, did he? But didn't have to. He got help from Ben White second half. He got help. And you know what? That's what these youngsters need sometimes. When they're not having a great game, they need help from somebody else has to step up. Exactly. Ben White stepped up big time on Saturday. Exactly. Exactly. I just thought it was great. Uh, fluid. I'm not dissing Arteta. Not dissing, not and dissing. I put respect on it. I'm just saying you can't bend. You, Zinchenko, Saliba, Gabriel, Benjamin White, that if they are all fit, I don't care if you have to sub Ben White at half time. Ben White starts the game. He was physical enough for the Tottenham's and the Liverpool's of the world earlier in the season. Don't give me this physicality bullshit nonsense because Tommy Asu, I love him, but he's terrible in possession. He doesn't progress the football. Bring him on as a bruiser, yes. But Benjamin White starts the game, period, every single time. Kev, another one here for you. Um, Real quick, where was I going next with this? So let's talk about... um, Let's talk about uh, the substitutions because you mentioned it briefly and we're talking about Benjamin and Tomiyasu and everything. And, you know, when you looked at the lineup, the weight start, did you feel comfortable with the team selection? Were you okay with everything? Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was fine. I, again, I, I, I'm not in the, I'm not in the business of second guessing the manager when, you know, we're, 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 we're five points clear at the top or two at the time, but he made the adjustment and there was a lot of clamor 
to see, okay, let's see Vieira in there. Xhaka maybe isn't progressing the ball as quickly as we want higher up the pitch. So, you know, let's let's see. I had no problem, by the way, I had no problem with Ben White being on the bench and Tommy Yasu playing. I had no problem with that either because Tommy Yasu has started games and he's done all right. So I had no problem with that. <laughs> the big problem was, Sophie... I blinked, I looked away, I looked back. We were 1-0 down. <laughs> it was crazy. And I think, I mean, a lot of people probably missed the goal because they're probably getting themselves all settled down. You know, talking to somebody beside them, next minute, you the Bournemouth fans are celebrating. What the hell's going on? No, didn't even have time to make the tea. Didn't even craziness. have any time to, to bed into the game or anything. So you find yourself down. You know, we, we, we pushed, we, we, we pried, but we didn't, we couldn't hurt them enough. I mean, we had chances, but we couldn't take them, Sophie. So we're going at 1 0. And then let's be honest, we make an adjustment. But before you know it, so we're 2 0 down at home. It's ma- it, it, it Craziness. Is madness. It really is madness. But do you know what, Sophie? You mentioned it when I come on. You mentioned it's the journey, right? Mm-hmm. We want to be able to do a review of the season when we've got that Premier League trophy, <laughs> right? And we could talk about these moments in glowing terms because this is another game where it's easy to just think you can put your thumb on it and say, yeah, it's Bournemouth, this is how it's going to go. It's the Premier League. Nobody knows how it's going to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you remember back in the last season? What was the last game of the season? Man City found themselves two goals down at home. Yeah. You know, to a team who really, they should never be 2-0 down. But that's the way these things go sometimes. You just can't put your finger on it. So, again, Sophie, what a magic moment. Magic moment. I wasn't too fussed about, obviously, the, 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 the team selection. It didn't quite pan out how we wanted it to. But when it doesn't, Sophie, and the manager is much maligned, but he's getting it better, he made the adjustments when it really mattered. He did. Ben White was on. Obviously, Smith Rowe would come on. And then this man, Reese Nelson, he made the adjustment. And we kicked on. And Bournemouth, it was, you know, they were just trying to hold on for dear life. They would have been happy with a point. <laughs> but we needed the three more than they needed the point. Yeah, I mean, you and I did our five games of predictions and we said that we cannot afford to lose any of those five games. Um, I had You had us winning all of them. I had us um, drawing against Fulham, uh, but beating Everton and Bournemouth. We've got Leeds, of course, Crystal Palace, mm-hmm. Fulham. And the Europa League, which we'll touch at the very end of, of the show. Right. 400 of thir- 430 of you in live chat this fine Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hit that like button. Let us know, Chief Like Officer Tammy Steele's what we're looking at. What was Jamie O'Hara saying? This is the one question that I've gotten from so many squaddies, Super Kev. <laughs> uh, Do you know what? I've, I've got to say, he was under under duress a little bit because obviously Spurs lost an Arsenal one. <laughs> but do you know what? He's been very complimentary about Arsenal. He still he still in his heart wants Arsenal to blow up. He says, you know, Arsenal will bottle it. He still wants that, but there's no conviction in his voice. That's why I don't know if you saw me laughing at him, Willie. <laughs> with his with his miserable face, his face is miserable. I'm laughing at him. It's on our Twitter account. He's so wants, good. He, he wants Arsenal to mess up so much, solely because you know he's 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 Spurs. But he's just saying, I you know, I, he says I've got to give Arsenal major credit because what I when I when they lost to City, he thought that was it. They'll just crumble. Then he said, you won four games on the bounce. He said it's, it's incredible. <laughs> you know. It's, he said, I'm thinking you're going to crumble. You win You win four games on the bounce now. He said, God, Bosch, Jan. Oh, Bosch, Bosch. We smashed it. Unbelievable. <laughs> I hope Kev. everybody, I hope everybody enjoyed 
talk sport on Friday. It was great, we, Kev. You bossed uh, it. I mean, it was but listen, Jason's a lot of fun. I know we he, I know he rips fun. us, but he's great he fun. he dishes it out, but he takes it well, does Jason. Yes. Andy Goldstein, yes. not so much. That dude can't take any he dishes it out, but he can't take it. Darren Bent did these best today to absolutely annihilate him. And I don't know if you heard the intro Matty K sent it to me, but when um Tottenham lost the way Jason does the intro, has anyone seen Harry Kane? Has anyone seen? And he did one today for Man United just so they could play on drive. And it was brilliant, Kev. Oh, my God. It went on. I swear to God, it must have gone on for five minutes. It was gold. It was well, it will, gold. wasn't it? I mean, there was, a lot of, <laughs> there was a lot of goals in that game. My God. And Laura Woods just handing it to the Tottenham fan today. Um you know, all hail Laura Woods, um, who is prime a time proper, there. Proper guru. Yeah, totally. Brilliant, and brilliant. Kev, it was so it was a great show. You and Jason did brilliantly. Um, hope I hope we get to hear you again on a Friday night. That was um that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, just a few more minutes here. Uh, let's just get some of your comments that I marked. Uh, Whiteb says, we need more sections with drummers. Make the stadium hostile without being abusive. Make opposition scared to come to the Emirates. Make the Emirates feared like Anfield. I like it. I like it a lot. Lynn, regarding the young players and the Haylenders, their parents must be so proud of them. They're lads you want to take home with you and be part of the family. I look at them and go back and think of my boys. They're such a joy to our fans. 100 well said, Lynn. single well percent. Taywo says, given the impact of our academy graduates and they've had in our title push, Arteta hasn't looked at anyone at Haylen to induct into the first team since he took over. Well, um, by the way, Kev, can we just uh, get your take real quick on Emil Smith-Rowe, who is pictured here in this shot? I thought the, the the sub, subbing the sub, I thought smart. I was not offended by that at all. Were you? No, nope, not at all. I thought, like I said at, um, a little bit earlier, he's probably played, put Smith-Rowe on far earlier than he would have liked because he's got to manage his minutes because... He's been out such a long time. You know, getting that, that amount of minutes in his legs right now couldn't really make a big impact, but he got the minutes in was great. And then to bring on Reese Nelson, and you could see the zip was in Reese Nelson, um, he, who done, obviously, absolutely fantastic. What good management, So, <laughs> What good management. Absolutely mm. brilliant. Yeah, no, good. it was uh, really good. And he played, I thought he did quite well. He won. He done all right. He done for. Do you know Didn't what? We he win the header. Was it? Was it in, we, was it in this create, game? We created chances, so we created chances. We just we 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 just gave ourselves so much to do that we needed fresher legs. Yeah. If you know what I mean, we needed fresher legs, and uh, Reese Nelson supplied it. <laughs> so Smith yeah, Rowe, all... Smith Rowe will get better. Definitely get better. Also, didn't wasn't it his header that landed to Thomas Partey's feet? Something he he was integral in the Thomas Partey goal. Um, I'm not too sure if it was was it Smith Rowe who headed it. Maybe it was. I think it. But I think it was. It, it was. was him. It was either Smith Rowe or Ben White or somebody got on the end of a a corner or whatever, headed it back or across. Yes. And Thomas Partey put it in. So listen, you know, I think Emil Smith Rowe done all right on Saturday. It's still early doors in his rehab, but we're gonna we're gonna need him. It's good that he got the minutes in. I will tell you that much. Yeah, it was Emil Smith Rowe. Thanks, gang. I knew you would come up trumps for us again. Um, Kev, did you? Uh, what was? Did you think? Um, gosh, who was gonna? I was gonna ask Vieira. you. Yes. Um, what What was your take on maybe some of the other other bits and bobs that happened in the game? I thought Vieira didn't do too bad. Again, Sophie, when you find yourself 1-0 down after nine, nine seconds, then Bournemouth are just going to bank up. They're going to sit there. And to be fair to them, they banked up and they, they took their time and they broke on us. As you said, Ramsdale with a, with a couple of really good saves to, to keep the score at 1-0 in the first half. But again, I, I, thought, I think when... The opposition are at their are at their. I've got the most energy. It's very difficult for Vieira to make a big impact. I think second half is when Vieira starts to get on the ball and starts to probe a bit. But again, because we were we're pushing, 
We need fresher legs. You mm -hmm. know, we need fresher legs. We need probably a bit more power. And that's why Xhaka came on. And it, it does it. Everybody played their part. Don't get me wrong, Sophie. And to think Vieira's going to come in and he's going to boss the game, I don't think he's at that stage just yet. Yeah, Greek Commander has this one to follow up on that. Does he simply need a run of games to, for us to see the best of him? We've seen him get a few more minutes as a sub, Kev, and we talked last week about he's slowly coming into his own. What I worry about a little bit was if that was a, 10, a top 10 team in the Premier League and we started off the way we did um, and we had Vieira in midfield, do you think we could have been punished more? Well, it all depends. Don't forget. Against a, a, maybe a team in the top 10, they have more ambition. Mm. So there's more gaps, if you know what I mean. Because they want to they wanna, they wanna hurt you, so they, they keep the ball and then they break on you. And then when you play, you have time to play. It's very difficult when Bournemouth sit back and they just block all your spaces. That's why he's there. And sometimes it, that's why you don't see the game open up until maybe 70 minutes. Sophie, mm -hmm. where people start to get a little bit tired and you get a little bit more room. So, again, it's not his fault. I think he's a, he's a good player. It's just going to take him a bit of time because yeah. you know, it's his first season. He's still adjusting. Yeah, I agree. And I, I see him starting, you know, heading home to Portugal, Portugal. on yeah. Thursday, Kev. Do you see him he starting? Starts. 100% yep. he starts. Definitely yep. starts. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant stuff. A uh, couple more here. And um, if there's anything else you squaddies want to add, get it in now. Uh, I just want to, I'm going to end on Nelson and Ramsdale a little bit here. So Guna Colt, Nelson has always had the physical tools. He's put together mentality. He has put it together mentally for the first time. You see the confidence. He used to look unsure on the pitch. Eddie still has. The reason why I saved this one from Guna Colt, and you mentioned it, Kev, and I just wanted to make sure that we addressed it is, there have been, and someone said that Arteta hasn't given a chance to like Haylenders. That is not true, firstly. And actually, a few squaddies thought the same thing. Um, you know, of course, we know where Saka got his debut and all that stuff, but he supported Saka, he supported Emil Smith Rowe. Maitland Niles was given plenty of chances at this club. Joe Willock was also given chances. Sometimes the talent just doesn't measure up, measure up to the hope or what we as fans, we want. We want Ath Athletic Bilbao. We want we want that type of team. Who would who doesn't want a starting eleven of Haylenders? That would be magical, but it's not possible. So I just think we need to take a beat. Um, you know, and, and as you know, I've been critical, but you can't criticize him for that. I think if the player is talented, look, he kept faith with Eddie. Everyone wanted Eddie sold, most people, mm -hmm. but he kept faith with Eddie. So he's gave he's given Eddie a new contract and a chance. I don't think you can say that. Aston says, are we witnessing one of the greatest Premier League managerial performances of all time? Youngest manager taking the youngest squad to a title, recovered 15 points from behind. Good, good question, Aston. Aston, we're only going to know that when the silverware is on the sideboard. And then we could start crowing about whether it's the greatest Man, young, youngest manager performance and managerial performance of all time because if he win, if if Arsenal win the Premier League he's the youngest Premier League manager to win it isn't he? Yes He is so hey listen I, I'm, I'm telling you now would it would it be the youngest how, how old Premier was League Mourinho? side as well? Mourinho yeah, he, he, I think he'd be the youngest 100% Ar No Arteta would be the youngest Yeah but would would Arsenal be the youngest team? Other than the nine, other than the um, Man United ninety two, I think I think total team I think we'd be the youngest because in yeah. that team you still had McClare. was McClare yeah, in that Robson, team used McClare, Bruce Bruce Pallister, Pallister, you know Irwin they, Irwin so you know they weren't just they weren't spring chickens they had good youngsters. But I think this side would be the youngest. So again, wouldn't that be a, a would that just be a massive, massive plus for us 
I don't think we're getting enough Ackerman. respect for what this team has done last year and this year. This is why I didn't fall off the cliff when we didn't qualify for the Champions League. Because I'm like, how is it this team is even in the conversation to finish in top four? And this season, how is it? How is it this team is even in a conversation to be title contenders? We are before our curve. When you do the PowerPoint presentation, we've we're hitting before well, there's, the plan. So if there's there's one thing I want to discuss, if you've got a few minutes. Yes, I've got a few more minutes, of course. For you, Super Kev, I've got plenty. Gabriel Jesus and the impact we need him to have when he comes back. And I know we have to give him a bit of time to find his feet. But this, this top player has got a massive impact to play for us, especially in April, So. I believe in April, this we've got to get him up to speed for April because that is the championship months. That's the title months. The teams we play in that month are going to determine whether we take this title or not. What's your thoughts on that one? I've always said... We got to wait till we get to that April fixture, the second game against Man City. Um, I've definitely said that we've got to win these five games, mm -hmm. at, or at least just have one draw, because April is tough. Liverpool, West Ham, Manchester City, and Chelsea, I believe, falls into yeah. the April as well. Chelsea, yeah. Um, we're going to need Jesus. Let's be honest. Mm. It's kind of like when someone gives you a head start in a race, right, Kev? And Jesus gave the team, not knowing he was going to be injured, just him being part of the team. I got massive, this. Massive top of the, here's the point. We're top of the league. You know, had to duck out for three months. Feels Has it been three months yet? Yeah, feels like it has. Mm. Um, and now we get him back for the finale, for the final act. He's going to want to finish what he started this was his team mm -hmm. really a little bit like american football the quarterback owns the team they're his and he embraced it and they took on his personality mm -hmm. and you know what i love kev what you've just said is so important who's on the sideline at every home game hugging every player when he comes off the pitch especially a winning goal scorer he did it with eddie in the man united game and he did it with reese nelson in the Bournemouth game as well. What you have just said holds the biggest weight of a lot of things we've talked about on this show tonight. Having him come back, he's going to finish what he started. He'll be a caged animal. Also, Solf, you know when the, the substitutes um, train after the game? Oh, he did the warm down, he, didn't he? Not only warm down, because they, they play little games and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. He's involved in that. That's a really, really good sign. Do you think um, Do you think his first game back will be a Europa League game? Like, How close do we think he is? It's not this week, but will it be the home game against Sporting Lisbon next week? Potentially, Kev? potentially, yeah. Bring him into that kind of match versus throwing him into... A, a not, Premier not, League game, so yeah. to speak. Unless, obviously, you know, listen... Trossard, I believe it is uh, possibly a couple of weeks. He's got a groin. Eddie, I'm not too sure how bad Eddie is. But you take those players out, so we've only got Martinelli. As a striker, really. Yeah. And he done okay at the weekend. But we'd much rather Jesus there and Martinelli left so we could get that dynamic going again. But, you know, we have to be careful with him. Did you feel like we we when Trossard went off, Kev? Do you feel like we lost the chaos that we talked about on Friday, the confusion and the chaos? Do you think no, we became a little bit too predictable? It's it's not the same dynamic, but we still created chances. So obviously Trossard's a very experienced player. He knows when to go wide. He knows when to hold the middle. He knows when to drop into the false nine position. He knows where to move. He knows when to move. Um, Martinelli isn't as, as experienced, you know, so mm -hmm. 
Like, listen, a lot of people wanted to see Martinelli at the top end of the pitch. You know, he had one ball to where it was a race, didn't he? And he went through and he put it over the bar. Yeah. You know, that was... But we need more of that from Martinelli. But listen, against a team who defends deep, you may only get one of them a game. So that's why you have to take it. Unfortunately, or fortunately for that matter, Sophie, we might have to just start with Martinelli through the middle. And Reese on the left and Saka on the right. Well, yeah, we, we might just have to do that. I, th I think it sounds like Trossard might be okay for you, the squad he sent. Until we hear from the club, guys, um, you know, we hope that he's okay. Sounds like hopefully is. Jesus will not be rushed back and he will not be risked. And I tell you, the good news is, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that none of our players have been called up into the Brazil squad for this next international break, which, by the way, once again, the international break, sucking at the most inopportune time. Stop it already. Mm. Kev, yeah, what else? So, you, know, you know, Man City have got more players out yeah, they do. than we, we don't have, mind so. that. Yeah. Oh, let them go. Yeah, let them go. Keep our players back. Let we love them international go. football. Go. We love let international go. football. But again, so this is, you know, we've discussed this previously. This is, this was an Achilles heel for us last season. Yes, international Clint. breaks were an Achilles heel. It hasn't been that bad now. It might just work in our favour, so. We like, we'll take it this time, Kev. We'll take it all. We'll, you know, we'll with, with Jesus, it might just work in our favour. Because yes. you know what, Sophie? There might be a, a, a rearranged game. Oh, God. Behind closed doors for Jesus, just to make sure he's up to speed. Yes. For a minute there, I see you. I'm totally zoning out. 91. I'm thinking ahead. I said, I promised I wouldn't because in, in my mind, I just went to, oh my God, they're not going to rearrange that City Arsenal game until the end of the season, are they? They're going to find an excuse and a way to make that game the last game of the season. A training ground game for, for Jesus will be fantastic. Just to keep it ticking. Well, look, I put this up because it's been a long time since I've been able to use it. They were his disciples. And they have gone off and they have shared the gospel, the Arsenal gospel, without him in the most phenomenal, engaging way, Kev. The Arsenal players embraced Jesus' gospel. Arteta wants to lead him to the promised land, Kev, showing him the pictures of all the legends. Jesus to come back and close the deal. That would be absolutely amazing. What do you want the squaddies to know? About this game, what do you want them in your in your hope, Kev? How do you want them to feel about all of this right now? Well, I, want to, I want them to feel proud. That's I think that's the most important thing. Feel proud of the club. Feel proud of the players. I remember when we were coming on air and we were battling. You know, we were battling. It weren't it weren't so nice. No, but it weren't so nice. Oh, I when know. things weren't, weren't so nice, we took it on board and, you know, we could leave with our, with, our, with our ball under our arm. Do you know what I mean? And we could go and do what we're doing, but we'd come back the next day. Do you remember lockdowns and all that? We've been through a lot together. Now, we're at the top. And we're battling to be champions, everyone. This is, this is special times. This is special times for all of us. We all want it to happen like tomorrow, don't we? But embrace what's to come because we may, we may never see it again for <laughs> another decade. We, you just don't know. Exactly. You just don't know. So the team need us. Give that love to the boys. Give that love to yourself as well. Love yourself enough to enjoy all the, the, the great moments. Beautiful. Because it means a lot. It does. It means a lot. Beautiful. Um, and as you know, we wear our heart on our sleeve. I want you guys to do something special at the end of this show because I always handing over to Kev to close the show. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in, uh, hit the like button, shared your day with us. It doesn't go unnoticed. And you guys know how much it means to us that you share your time. Um, and put the Highbury squad in your daily map. Uh, a very good friend of this show, one of our own, um, unfortunately lost one of his own and probably one of the most special people you could 
ever lose. James Johnston lost his mum over the weekend. As you know, James is a huge part of the Highbury squad. We love and adore him here. Um, and he lost his mum over the weekend. Uh, so I know you guys are friends and you text each other as well. And some of you DM each other on social and stuff. But just sending love out to James, his brother and his dad from everyone here at the Highbury squad. James, we love you. We're with you. And we are here waiting for you whenever you want to come back. We love you, James. You know what, squaddies? This is why sometimes, you know, the way we end what we what we say regarding family and loved ones, you know, you never know what, to, what tomorrow brings. Honestly, you never know. And for somebody as beautiful as James's mum, you know, to, to, to pass away um, is, is so tragic. And deepest condolences to, to him and his family. The Arsenal family are going to feel it. We're all going to feel it. But we're going to send a lot of love and strength to James at this difficult time. Love is our currency, guys. We've got to love each other. We may not agree with everything, but love is our currency. We're all in the same family now. We're all gooners together. And always remember to tell the people you love that you love them. And you know what? Even the ones that you don't love, let them get on with it. Honestly, do not get involved with any nonsense. Just let them go. No problem. You crack on. You know, concentrate and try and be as positive as you can. Because honestly, you just never know what's around the corner. So again, love to you all. Send, say that you love your loved ones. Please tell them. Drop them a text. Whatever you need to do. Do it because you don't know what's around the corner. James, we love you. Look after yourself. And, and again, deepest condolences. So a somber at East Bodies for James and his family. God bless and take good care, everyone. At East. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>